Hey guys, welcome. I'm Catherine and this is Little Bits of Heaven Homestead. So for any of you guys who have followed me for any length of time, you'll know that about two years ago I teamed up with Julie from Dirt Patch Heaven. If you're not familiar with her, do pop over to her channel because she's got tons of useful information for you. But she and I had teamed up and we did this really long collaboration. In fact, it was for like almost a year or so and we called ourselves the Pepper Preppers. So for those of you who are new to the prepping world, who find yourself in a kind of insecure and scary situation, the pandemic is kind of shifting our foundations and made us question a lot of our fragile system, welcome, you're in the right place. So I am going to be doing a series, and this is part one, on practical prepping. Today's video, I'm not even going to ask you to buy anything, and which is funny, that's kind of counterintuitive to the whole preparedness movement. It's, uh, it's very much about stocking and storing things so that you've got continuity of comfort, but it's also so much broader, so much deeper than that. And I would like to take you on a journey through total preparedness, and it's going to take a while because you can't cover all that it entails in order to be fully prepared in one video. So today I'm going to focus on where do you start? Uh, if you're brand new to this, you may be feeling a little overwhelmed. You're going to the grocery stores and you're seeing empty shelves. And that's not something that we've really experienced, at least in my adult lifetime. I do know at one point in time, back in the Great Depression era, that this was not unusual. And our grandparents and great grandparents possessed skills that we could only imagine, guys. We've lost those. Let's get them back. So in order to be prepared, uh, you're going to have to define your goal. And so I'm going to give you some steps here in order to establish how to prep, what to prep, how much to prep, and why to hold those items. So first of all, I'd like to tell you, if you are joining me here recently, today's Good Friday. We're about to enter into Easter. We're also in the middle of a pandemic, and most of us are under shelter in place, stay at home, not orders, but suggestions, strong suggestions. Uh, there are some places in our country where people are being ticketed and fined for being out in public. We're being requested by the CDC to wear face masks. Our whole world has changed recently and it's, and it's this weird blend of total panic and total normalcy. And it's such a weird combination. So if you're feeling stressed and overwhelmed, no, you're not alone. You're not alone. And it's okay to feel overwhelmed we're going to take this slowly, we're going to take it step by step, and I'm not going to give you a tinfoil hat, conspiracy theorist, off the wall perspective of prepping. I'm not a zombie apocalypse prepter. I am a continuity of comfort mom, caring for my family, wanting to make sure that I don't see my family suffer. I think that's really all we're trying to uh, avoid is we want to make sure that our families are well cared for. Uh, in this current pandemic situation, like I referred to earlier, we're seeing store shelves barren. And that's really, it's an eerie feeling to go shopping these days. Uh, and again, it's a balance of normalcy. There are some aisles that look untouched. And there are some aisles that look like they've just been combed over and there is nothing. As a prepper, I can tell you that these are items that we have been able to excuse ourselves from the panic and, um, I don't know, the hoarding events that I guess people are labeling it with. And make no mistake, I have no fault or assign no ill ideology to those that are considered hoarders these days. I get it. We're scared, we're seeing fragility of resources, and it's natural to want to prepare and take care of your own family. Self-protectionism is not necessarily a bad thing. And when you've got your bases covered and you are no longer in that panic, and you can excuse yourself from it, then you're also removing yourself from those that will need to be aided by the government. And by excusing yourself from that panic and paranoia and that whole crowd of people that truly, truly needs help can receive the help rather than average everyday individuals who could have done something about it in the, in the front end in order to mitigate the risk. So I want you guys to be that crowd, risk mitigators. You've got your bases covered. You are not scared, you're not fearful because of lack of resources. We can be scared and fearful for the situation at whole, 
but not because we're afraid of feeding our families uh, or lack of toilet paper or fill in the blank. So uh, interesting times we're living in. But if we can remove ourselves from that and then the truly needy can be helped, then uh, being prepared is not good just for the prepared family, it's good for everybody. So what I'm gonna recommend you start with is a notebook. Get a notebook, uh, get the little section tabs, and we will build this as we go. But you can start with food tabs or tabs such as food, uh, things that your family normally likes to eat. And I would print out any regular recipes that your family enjoys and drop them into this notebook. Because when you're stressed and overwhelmed, that is not the time to try and recall things from memory. And believe it or not, food is a huge source of comfort. And uh, if your family's stressed in all other areas, you wanna make sure that you're getting enough calories, that you're feeding your family well, and that you're resting. And so if you can remove layers of stress, that's just all the better. So get your notebook. This is gonna help you clear your mind, focus on what you need, what you have, and where we're headed as far as our end goals. Okay, so we've got our notebook, that's step one. And step two is let's define what we're prepping for. So currently we're in the middle of a pandemic. Who would have thought that would have been coming? Always a possibility, guys. So that's the thing with a lot of emergencies is they don't usually give a lot of notice. They kind of show up at your doorstep and then you've got to deal with it. And either you're prepared or you're not. So some of the events and what I, what I personally uh, prep for is not so much zombie apocalypse, pandemics, I, I never would have planned this into my preps, but when you're prepared, it tends to overlap all emergencies. And so that gives you peace of mind. So more often than not, if I were to be a beginning quote unquote prepper, what I would be focusing on is things like job loss, uh, things like an illness that takes you out of the workplace for a couple of weeks, things like a weather event. Um, my, I have tons of friends in Florida, they're regularly prepping for hurricanes. I have friends in the Northeast that are regularly prepping for blizzards. I'm in an area where we have very little or possibly no natural disasters. My main concern here as far as natural disaster is wildfire. And so that's a totally different prep than you would be prepping for say a blizzard. So if you can define what it is that you're prepping for, and maybe you are prepping for the zombie apocalypse, and if you are, heck yeah, you're gonna have all your bases covered. So, but do define what it is your most likely life-changing event or emergency situation would be. And that's also gonna give you clarity on what it is you need to put into your home as far as storage and what kind of skills you're gonna to wanna to develop. And I mean, it's, it's, that's gonna give you your whole game plan. Okay, so now we've got our notebook and we've defined what we're prepping for. So now what I want you to do, and at this point in time, if you are on uh, stay at home orders, this is the perfect time to do this, but organize your home. Go through room to room and look for things that would be handy in some sort of scenario. Maybe you lose power. Do you guys have flashlights? There's no use in buying a flashlight if you already have six, but they're hidden throughout your home. So find them, locate them, put them in a central spot that you're fully aware of. And if you don't need to buy flashlights, that you can use those financial resources to purchase something else. But this is a compound problem. You have flashlights. Do you have batteries? My kid loves to play with flashlights. She builds forts all the time. So I have about five flashlights that are totally dead. They won't do me any good. Even though I own the flashlight, I need to make sure that they are ready to function as the tool that I purchased them for. So do an inventory throughout your home. Identify things. So I have found, especially in the lighting area, that flashlights aren't my preferred light source when we do lose power and we do lose power and so some of this is going to be trial and error and hopefully you're not doing the trial and error portion in the zombie apocalypse you want to have all your ducks in a row and things figured out before then and that's the whole point of being prepared in the first place so go through do an inventory you're looking for tools you're looking for things that you already have that could be useful so things in your kitchen things in your bathroom do you have six bottles of shampoo hiding underneath your sink 
do you use lotion every day but you are down to half a bottle and that's something you would be really sad if you didn't have make notes make notes on everything so and to the next point track your family's food so for about two weeks for the next week or two especially since you're at home and your kids are at home and you're seeing what a true full day with your family requires as far as your food needs write it down look in your pantry look in your cupboards look in your refrigerator look at the things that you're eating and you're not eating so if you have six cans of tuna fish in your cupboard but your kids hate tuna don't go and buy more tuna even if it's shelf stable and it's on some list that some prepper put out there is recommended to have you want to cater to your family's needs also keep in mind, and most of us who do have food sensitivities and food issues will already factor this in, but if you're preparing for family members that have food issues, also pencil in their needs. Keep that in mind. I have found, I did a dry run on our preps in February, and I found that I had some gaps, specifically things like dog food. I was not fully prepared for the amount of food that my, I have new puppies, livestock guardian dogs. They're growing by 10 pounds a month and whoa, their food consumption needs are shocking. And so that's something that I have had to adjust to, especially in these current times, because I'm not going out and going shopping like I was. And so I've had to find some alternatives on how to get dog food to my house. I found some online subscriptions. You can get creative, but if our system goes down, you're not gonna have those options. So it's good to know what your needs are, how long you want to prep for, and what specifically you need across the board. So if you're able to make notes, that's gonna help you in your planning journey. So uh, let's see here. Things that I didn't plan on. My kid likes a lot of snacks. She's at school five days a week normally. And so I wasn't quite prepared for her consumption needs. I had our meals covered, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but I didn't quite plan mentally for the amount of snacks that she would want and you definitely I'm not saying that you give in to your kids over any sort of scenario but I can tell you in an emergency and stressful situation happy kids do make a happy life so make sure that you've got some comfort items on hand for them so and it doesn't have to be an all-the-time regular thing but just like you want some things that make you happy your kids are gonna want some things that make them happy too so now we're gonna move on. So we're making notes on tools, things like shovels. Do you plan on growing a garden in whatever your uh, emergency situation is? If so, do you have, you can dig a garden with a hand trowel, but it's gonna be a nightmare. So you have to have the right tools on hand and you have to make notes on what you do have and what you're gonna wanna have. So uh, there are different types of shovels that cover different needs. So you may have a shovel for scooping stuff off your sidewalk, but that's not gonna break ground for a garden. So things to keep in mind, just make notes of what you do have in your tool arena. Food storage, that's what it's all about, right? So there are certain tools that you may have that you may have never used or tools that you have may have never heard of that you're gonna want. Things like vacuum sealers pressure canners, especially if you're growing a garden. If you're buying meat in bulk, you're gonna need to be able to separate it and store it in some fashion. Are you gonna freeze it? If so, you may want a vacuum sealer. That tool has earned its weight in gold at my house. You, if you have a pressure canner, you're gonna need jars. Not only are you gonna need jars, you're gonna need lids. And then, let's see here. So once you have it into jars, depending on what type of situation you're preparing for. If you're planning on storing all of your food in jars and you are in an earthquake prone area, you may not have security. So you're gonna wanna take notes as to not only how you store your food, but the situation that you're storing it for. I wanted to show you guys something that I did years ago. <clears throat> Five gallon buckets. This is one of my favorite storage methodologies. You can get these for just a couple of bucks. Uh, usually in the painting supply section, you're gonna wanna look for the number two grade. Those are food safe grade. This is a gamma lid. Uh, these are not cheap. Uh, you're gonna 
be thankful that you do invest in them if you do invest in them though they twist really cool I've got a week's worth of food for my family in here what I did at one point was I said okay I'm gonna make a week in a bucket and I'm gonna see what it looks like and we've taken it for test runs this is all processed junk this is junk that I would not normally feed my family because it's full of preservatives but in a situation where we are desperate for food this is going to be a lifesaver. You're also going to want to keep in mind that you need to rotate your food. Unless you're buying specifically things that are shelf stable for 25, 30 years, you're going to want to store what you eat, eat what you store, rotate it. So that way, you know you're storing foods that you like. Let me see if I can put this down. And that your family will appreciate but it's also gonna guarantee that it's good when you go to eat it because there would be nothing worse than 10 years from now encountering some emergency situation and you say, oh, thank goodness I'm prepared for this and you find that all of your food is mush and gross and rotten. So rotate, that is important. Okay, so now let's move on and we'll talk about skills. So we've identified that we've got tools, we've got some uh, items that we know we need, we've taken care of how much our family is going to eat every week, we kind of have a general game plan. So now let's talk about skills, because that's important. If you're going to store 50 pounds of flour, do you know how to make bread? And if you're planning on using a bread maker, what happens in a grid down situation? So some of these things go hand in hand, you're going to have to develop your skill sets. Think like your grandmother and great-grandmother. So um, I know that sliced bread was a great invention, but you know what else is all an incredible experience? Pulling a fresh loaf of bread out of the oven that you made. So you're gonna have to hone your skills. Things like CPR, first aid, those are important to know. Uh, I'm in a rural location. I am easily 30 minutes from help. And so if I put out a call to 911, it's not coming immediately. And so, and that would definitely be the situation in the case in a broad, uh, some sort of emergency situation that affects a huge area. I'm hearing reports out of New York where people are calling and asking for help and there just is no help. So you guys hone your skills, practice your skills, learn CPR, learn first aid. No excuse right now. There are classes all over the place. Find them, seek them out, take them. Uh, because once you learn skills, you can't get rid of them. That's the blessing. Like you can lose your supplies, but you can't lose your skill set. You're investing in yourself. And that, if I could encourage you in any way, shape, or form, invest in yourself. Build your skill sets. Because you can take that anywhere. It's a transient thing. So if for some reason you had to flee your home and you had to leave all your prep behind, you take your skills with you, period. So I can't tell you enough how important, I mean, skills is by far, that's what Julie and I have beat the drum is learn skills. Learn skills, go back to basics. You will be so thankful. So food storage, let's talk about it. If you are storing beans and rice, do you know how to cook beans and rice? So uh, have a plan. That's also what I would encourage you as, as you're printing out recipes, print out recipes specifically that have the items that you are storing in your food storage because it'll do you no good to print out a bunch of exotic recipes that your family absolutely loves but then you don't have the items on hand to cook it so you need to really this is a comprehensive it's a big deal and I know it sounds overwhelming but we're gonna take it step by step so hang with me guys so now we're gonna talk about space because obviously you need to be able to store this stuff somewhere and if you have said, okay, I want to store a year's worth of food for every family member on my house, well, that takes up a significant amount of space. And so you're going to need to start eyeballing around your house and looking for areas where you can designate as storage, be it for food, be it for medical supplies, be it for water, whatever it is, you're going to have to define a space. You need to keep in mind some certain criteria, things that will kill food nutritionally and quality wise light, heat, and oxygen. So you need to make sure that you are keeping your food stuff protected. Uh, you want to keep it in a cool, dark place, preferably. And if you're doing things like storing dry goods in canning jars, you're going to want to buy some oxygen absorbers. Uh, trust me, 
it's worth the investment. So, and there again, things like five gallon buckets, they've got mylar bags that you can put your food into. Freezing is always an option, may, may not necessarily be great in a grid down scenario, but if you've got room for an extra freezer or fridge, uh, that's definitely a good option to have because you're gonna wanna store things on the front end that are perishable. So if you're gonna, if your kids like milk, you're gonna wanna have a backup milk and that does take up space. So do consider these things as you are going into your prepping journey. I'm gonna come back with you guys next week and we're gonna start our first layer of food storage and it's gonna be short term and perishable foods. So I hope this was something of help. I hope I gave you some value. I hope I helped you guys find some peace. Do know that we're gonna take this journey. It's gonna be a slow and steady journey. Slow and steady always wins the race. You're welcome to do a marathon run. I'd also like to recommend one resource real quick. This has been a great go-to book. It's called Just In Case. I think it's backwards here on my video, but it is really comprehensive. Uh, this has kind of been my Bible on preparing for a while. It's uh, easy to read. It's not fear mongering and it gives you some really good information on lots of different scenarios. So if you're looking for to jump in the deep end right now, do pick up that book, highly recommend it. So until next week, guys, I hope you guys are healthy. I hope you're staying safe. I hope that, I hope that we all make it through this and come out the other end better, more prepared, and a little more appreciative of each other and society and the resources that we are all currently blessed to have. So until later guys, thanks for joining me.